Hi, welcome to this session on TinyML for AI at the very, very edge. I am Rajiv Murlidhar, a Principal Solutions Architect for IoT and Edge Computing at Amazon Web Services. I've been with Amazon Web Services for about a year and a half, and prior to that, I have a couple of decades of experience in the semiconductor industry. Joining me later is Prasad, uh, my colleague at AWS as well, and he will walk through some of the fine details of how we've implemented this use case and show a demo as well. So what we will cover in this session today, we will talk about AI at the uh, on microcontrollers, some of the interesting trends, enablers, and use cases that have that the industry has seen already. I'll give a brief overview of FreeRTOS and AWS IoT and some of the foundational components that we've used to build this solution and demonstration. Using TensorFlow Lite uh, for microcontrollers, which is a popular framework openly available today. Prasad will walk through some of the internal details of that implementation, the architecture, some of the con considerations based on the hardware, the use case, and how we've built that um, on-device ML capability for doing image recognition, and as well as connecting into AWS IoT for other lifecycle uh, capabilities, such as uh, over-the-air updates of that machine learning model itself. And I'll come back later to summarize the session and some key takeaways. So AI at the very, very edge, and by edge here, I mean tiny microcontrollers, uh, which are typically resource constrained, battery constrained, and so ML and artificial intelligence has typically resided so far in the recent past in the cloud for both training as well as inference. So what has now changed in the last few years that we are, being, uh, we are able to bring ML down to these tiny microcontroller devices? They are primarily three enablers here that I would like to mention and call out. One is the ability uh, from a hardware perspective, dedicated um, ML chips and features such as um, uh, ARM SIMD instructions, so single instruction multiple data, which is the gut of machine learning algorithms. These are now provided as instruction set architecture or ISA extensions in several different um, silicon vendor, uh, when, by several different silicon vendors today. Additionally, you have dedicated coprocessors or ML, ML chips that are also available um, on that same hardware itself. So you can do general purpose compute on generic ARM architecture based chips, and you can offload machine learning onto a dedicated chips as well. The second uh, enabler is um, the framework that uh, makes it all come together. So things like TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. So we'll talk a little bit about this in more detail. So frameworks like TF Lite have now made it possible to take uh, TensorFlow and machine learning algorithms that have been typically run in the cloud, scale them down to the uh, to this level where you can run them on microcontrollers. The third is improvements in semiconductor process technology. And by this, I mean your traditional transistor voltage technology for CMOS transistors has been a particular level of voltage below, below which you cannot do meaningful computation. Signals become noise, outputs are unreliable. Uh, one of the holy grails of semiconductor research in the last decade or so has been to shrink this uh, computation down to the lower level of those uh, voltage thresholds. And this is called near threshold voltage or sub-threshold voltage computing. Uh, recent advances by many companies and in the semiconductor industry has made it possible to reduce that operating voltage of CMOS transistors down to very, very low levels, which means you can run the same workloads, reuse the same transistors, but run them at much lower voltages, thereby consume much lower power. So this is the third key enabler that has made it possible to run AI and machine learning on tiny microcontrollers. So what are the use cases that this can enable now? <clears throat> Uh, if you take a connected vehicle or automotive uh, example today, these things generate terabit, terabytes of data in, in a day, uh, for example. And you would want the ability to do low latency, uh, very quick, uh, essentially, decisions based on image data, LIDAR, sensors, that is looking at uh, road signs, obstacles around you, et cetera. So you don't want to have to ship that data into the cloud uh, run an inference algorithm in the cloud and then bring that inference back down to the car to then tell to do the, to tell the car to do something different. So you would want to act on that data right there instantly, or almost instantly. In an industrial setup where you have industrial motors, vibrators, pumps, 
uh, engine components, etc., machine uh, assembly line, assembly plants, for example, these, are, these can be safety critical operations. So you would want the ability to detect any abnormality and then immediately take some action close to real time. Similarly, audio and sensing um, in health or connected home scenarios where you would want to take, where you can take action more um, uh, closer to the device itself is a very important capability and we'll talk about some of the use cases here. And what are the machine learning models that have that are used in such uh, um, examples? So Tiny ML by itself is also a consortium. It's a nonprofit foundation that's comprised of industrial entities as well as academicians and researchers, and they are uh, trying to build uh, different frameworks, benchmarks, um, etc., uh, to make machine learning on tiny microcontrollers a more widespread community, a bigger community. So what are some of the ML models and uh, 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 the uh, frameworks that I use to run these examples that I talked about. So if you look at audio, for example, wake word detection or context-aware noise cancellation, context-aware uh, beamforming techniques so that you can pick information from a different microphone based on the noise that you've detected, all of these things use uh, typical uh, deep neural nets or with a temporal capability that's provided by things like RNNs, recurrent neural nets, or long short-term memory um, models. Uh, things like image recognition, gesture recognition based on context or environment. Um, uh, these, uh, these are very typical in industrial and automotive use cases, semantic analysis um, of people or persons or obstacle detection in safety critical systems. All of these things use um, classification algorithms that are provided that are uh, typical from support vector machines, for example, or decision trees. Um, or um, typical deep neural nets, uh, uh, for example. The third category uh, that I would like to mention is the industrial or telemetry space, automotive, and um, all of these fall into that bucket where you have industrial motors, pumps, uh, engine motors, and components, etc. These again use classification mechanisms to uh, detect noise from or classify different kinds of noise or uh, data that is sensed from the different sensors. And you use things like decision trees, support vector machines again, naive bias algorithms, um, and other forms of DNNs. So these are um, some of the popular ML models that are used in the industrial use cases that I mentioned. Now moving into uh, the uh, IoT ecosystem itself and AWS IoT, running TensorFlow uh, Lite or machine learning models on the devices themselves is one capability, but the ability to build an entire pipeline of uh, device lifecycle in a secure manner, managing them at scale, the ability to roll out firmware upgrades on the devices so that you can manage the versions running on them, provide more secure, more features, etc., and also the ability to update the ML models running there. So this is another important capability. And for this, we need to look at the um, uh, entire space of not only the device, but also how it comes into the cloud and how you can build that entire uh, life cycle around that use case. So in order to do this, I'd like to give a brief overview of some of the important uh, capabilities that AWS IoT provides. And we like to bucket this into three big buckets. One is the device software, the one that runs on the tiny microcontrollers or the gateway systems, FreeRTOS and Greengrass respectively. The second is the control and connectivity components, which are your entry point into the cloud. So AWS IoT Core is an entry point of all the data, of all the signals and messages that are coming from devices, and you route them into IoT Core, gener do rules, and uh, you have a message broker there that can uh, enhance the messages, uh, uh, enact rules on them to process them, uh, to do specific things, store in a data store, move it into a database, uh, move it into a dashboard for uh, analysis, or move it into SageMaker for more fine-grained analysis and machine learning, for example. Here we'll focus more on FreeRTOS, um, since that's the key capability that we are going to uh, look at in this talk. So in general, uh, we uh, talk about software for either microcontrollers or microprocessors, which are more capable. So microcontrollers are your typical smaller devices, resource, battery, memory constraint, compute constraint that run on smart locks, on smart bulbs, um, coffee machines, for example, all of these things that um, 
have low latency, uh, sometimes low, so low latency requirements, but also extremely constrained processing capabilities. And that's where FreeRTOS comes into play. Uh, microprocessors are more higher end devices with more compute and memory capabilities. And this is where Greengrass, our gateway software, edge computing software, is uh, one of the more popular ones which can run on industrial grade, industrial strength, rugged devices in the plant. Talking specifically about FreeRTOS, this is one of the most widely used uh, operating systems today uh, for in the embedded world, uh, been there for about a couple of decades. Uh, 40 plus supported architectures, including some of the most recent RISC and ARM designs from several different silicon vendors. Extremely broad ecosystem support, both from a hardware and software perspective, is distributed under free and open source MIT license, and um, it continuously continues to improve. We continue to add more features, more capabilities, with inter-process communication, uh, enhancements to the core libraries, uh, communication libraries, OTA, et cetera. And I'll talk briefly about all of these things in just a little bit. Uh, FreeRTOS itself comes with LTS support, long-term support, which means uh, guaranteed security updates, feature upgrades, uh, bug, uh, bug, feature, uh, bug fixes. All of these are going to be uh, supported for two years um, from uh, the launch that was done a couple of months ago. Uh, FreeRTOS kernel itself is modular, comes with connectivity options to talk to Greengrass, your gateway device, edge computing device, as well as different connectivity um, options uh, which you can use to either talk MQTT over TCP or other libraries that I'll briefly mention. And all of these come with security as ground zero, as a foundational component. The ability to have a secure um, uh, credentials, secure the data as well as transmit data securely over the air into the edge device or the cloud. Also comes with uh, capabilities to do over the air updates uh, securely and roll out firmware onto devices at scale that have been deployed in the field. Um, FreeRTOS internals comes with um, uh, basic hardware and vendor supported libraries, uh, BSPs, board support packages for example, and also extremely modular uh, libraries for MQTT, HTTP, a highly optimized uh, transport and IP uh, stack, the ability to uh, use different connectivity, whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy, or uh, the recent announcement about using cellular IoT as well through LTEM or NB IoT or CATM1, using different cellular modems from our partners as well as um, MVNO stacks the uh, mobile virtual network operators that bridge your devices into AWS IoT Core through the telco uh, stack and base stations. So all of these things form an essential end-to-end -end ecosystem around which FreeRTOS has been built and the um, software deployments today that uh, we have uh, stitch the devices from not only the um, uh, industrial or the edge, edge capabilities, but also move them into the cloud. So, in the cloud itself, you have IoT Core, as I briefly mentioned, which is uh, which takes essentially data from the things that are coming in, your devices, your FreeRTOS-based sensors or uh, uh, your devices that are gathering data in your automotive, uh, uh, in your vehicle, for example, run it through a Greengrass Edge or a gateway device, bring them into IoT Core, a message broker there can then route messages into data stores, subsequent processing by serverless components such as AWS Lambda or the storage into Amazon S3 buckets and subs or subsequent processing by SageMaker for machine learning and inference, for example. Also, several different capabilities there, which we won't go into here, are associated uh, capabilities to do large-scale fleet management through device management, IoT device management, device defender, and the fleet hub support that we have announced recently, as well as IoT analytics and event management events capability that can allow you to automate uh, detection and response to events uh, that are coming from your IoT devices. Now, all of these things are the foundational components, and now we'll switch gear a little bit and, and look at uh, TensorFlow Lite itself and the ML capabilities that we have used to build this solution. So TensorFlow Lite, as most of you uh, are aware, is one of the most popular machine learning frameworks today, both for training and inference. By training, we mean typically 
looking at large data sets and then building the ML train models that can then start to do inference, which is predicting. So use the large data sets to understand what do these images look like or what do these audio samples look like. And inference is the stage where you match that with a pre-trained um, model. And if you, have, if you now come across a new image, you look at it and say, does this look like something I've seen before? So that's your inference stage. So TF light is essentially TensorFlow for um, machine learning inference taken down to microcontrollers. So what TF Lite, the open source framework and foundation has done is to train, uh, use ML models to, uh, that have been used to train larger image or audio kind of use cases, convert and optimize that model, downscale it down to uh, a device that can run on a small ARM Cortex M3 class processors as low as 16 kilobytes of core runtime. That's what uh, TF Lite is capable of today. Now, this does not require uh, typical OS support, runtime libraries, or dynamic memory allocation. Now, while that is interesting capability from an experimental point of view and, and extremely useful as well, this now starts enable, enabling new use cases. End-to-end um, -end device lifecycle manage is crucial when you are thinking about device uh, such capabilities at scale. The ability to update those device underlying operating system is crucial. You want to be able to do it securely. You want to be able to rotate security credentials so that you don't compromise on security of your fleet of devices. As well as with machine learning down on those devices using TF Lite, you want to be able to update those models itself based on continuous learning, based on the data that you have seen in the past, sending that data into the cloud so that there's a continuous evaluation and training that's happening in the cloud. And if and when you have newer models updated that are more accurate, you can then pull them down into the device, roll that out to your scale of, uh, to your entire fleet of devices in the industry, industrial shop floor, or your connected vehicles fleet. That way, your capable, your devices that are running in your vehicles are more capable, can react more accurately and faster. So that's the capability that we would want to build. And with that, I'll hand it over now to Prasad to talk about how we've actually built this um, using TensorFlow Lite on a FreeRTOS capable chip. Over to you, Prasad. Thank you, Rajiv. Hello, everyone. I'm Prasad. I'm a software development engineer in Amazon Web Services Internet of Things group. I will talk in more detail about the example implementation that we have for a connected tiny ML device. For this example, we have selected ESPI development board, which features ESP32 chip, a 2 megapixel camera, a microphone, 4 megabytes of flash, and 8 megabytes of external RAM. This is sufficient to store and run TF Lite model for microcontrollers. ESP32 also has two CPU cores, making it easy to run TF Lite models along with application loads. The Wi-Fi connectivity option helps to connect to AWS IoT services to report and store events and take actions. All these features makes ESPI platform suitable for developing AI-capable IoT applications. The connected doorbell example that we have is based on SPSF and TensorFlow's doorbell and person detection example. The example continuously runs the person detection on the images captured by the camera, and when a person is detected, it sends a message to the AWS IoT service. The flowchart shows the basic steps that is performed while running this demo. The initialization phase includes initializing the camera, TensorFlow model, as well as the network, and another for running the protocol stack to report events to the AWS IoT service. The application architecture is uh, simple. We have two free RTOS tasks, one for running the TensorFlow Lite model, and another one for running the protocol stack to report events to the AWS IoT service. The TensorFlow task runs the person detection model, and if a person is detected, then the data is sent to free RTOS queue. The communication task is waiting on the queue, and when data is available, it reads the, from the queue, creates a JSON packet, and publishes the data to the example topic, which is sent to the AWS IoT cloud service using MQTT connection. The demo consists of two parts. First is a simple connected doorbell example that publishes a message on MQTT topic when a face is detected. Second is updating the tiny ML model over the air. For this demo, 
I have cloned the GitHub repository that we have provided in the reference section. I have also installed all the prerequisites required for developing an application on ESPI platform. So I have already built the application and I have connected the ESPI to my machine. So we can start flashing using the IDF scripts. We can also uh, go to the IoT console and in the test tab, enter the topic uh, that the device will be subscribing to, which is slash example slash topic. Uh, so that we can monitor whenever a message is received. So device is now booting up, uh, camera is initialized and it started to capture images. Uh, so if we scroll up, uh, we can see uh, the Wi-Fi is connected and a TLS connection is established followed by an MQTT uh, connection to the broker. It also started uh, the OT agent and it is in a ready state. It means it can now receive uh, updates over the air. Okay, here we go. So, uh, so we have detected a phase and a message is published on the example topic. In the AWS IoT console, uh, we see uh, the JSON received as well. The next slide shows a simplified comparison between using single core for running TF-Lite model as well as communicating to AWS IoT services and using dual core to distribute this workload. When using single core, the next inference is delayed if the core is busy in communicating uh, data to the, uh, to the AWS IoT core services. This can be improved by using core zero for TF-Lite model and core one for all other communication or application tasks. A smart connected edge device requires a model trained with high quality data set for better machine learning performance. Once the edge devices are deployed with this model, the machine learning performance might degrade over time as real world data drifts from the data set model was trained on. This makes periodic retraining with steady stream of new data from the edge devices important. The connected edge device can send data to AWS IoT service related to model performance. This data can be stored and analyzed to determine when a model's accuracy is degrading. This is useful to determine if the model needs to be retrained based on the new data set and re redeployed. The model retraining is usually done by collecting and adding new data to the existing data set. This depends on the ability to acquire this new data where edge device is deployed. The advantage of a connected edge device is gathering this new data set at periodic interval or on specific events is possible. This step can be automated to build a continual learning system based on the nature of the data. The retraining process can be reiterated till performance is back to satisfactory levels. The next problem to solve in building a continual learning system is to deploy the retrained model. When the edge devices are at scale, then managing the deployment is also a challenge. This can be greatly simplified using the AWS OTA over the air service and OTA client library. So this is the second part of the demo where uh, we are updating the TinyML model on the device. So we start by uh, creating a job, uh, which is the OTA update job. And we select a thing where we want this TinyML model uh, to be updated. Uh, which is a connected doorbell thing. Uh, after that, we select the protocol. Uh, the service supports HTTP and MQTT uh, protocol. Uh, the OT library supports uh, both HTTP and MQTT. Uh, in case of HTTP, it will send a pre-signed URL uh, to the device, uh, which, which device can use to uh, download the uh, updated file. Uh, then we select uh, the, uh, the signing mechanism. We can sign a new file, select a previously signed file, or use a custom signature. Uh, we then uh, select uh, the file that we want to uh, send to the device, uh, which is the updated uh, person detect uh, uh, model. Uh, which this file is already uploaded to the S3, so I just selected that. Uh, uh, some of the platforms doesn't use the path name for the file on the device, uh, so we just put uh, slash na. Uh, 
then we have uh, the file type uh, this this id can be used for identifying the type uh, the type of the file uh, from the on the device like is it a firmware update or is it a certificate rotation or is it a, a tiny ml model update uh, next we select the ota role uh, which gives access to s3 code signing services and job services now we uh, give here uh, the id for the job uh, which is update tf light uh, model after that uh, we select the job type either snapshot or continuous in case of continuous the uh, if a new device are added to the group uh, it will still uh, the job will still continue uh, sending updates to those devices uh, then we have other configurations like uh, for job rollout um, as well as job about configurations and settings uh, and job execution timeout configurations uh, we are not using that in this demo so we'll leave that default uh, we also have resource tags uh, those also we are not using so we'll leave them uh, empty now we create uh, we click create uh, this will create uh, the job and put it in the job queue if we look at the left side uh, the device received a notification and it started to request uh, blocks so that's how uh, that's how we can update the tinyml model on the device uh, using um, uh, job services uh, thank you uh, back to rajiv Thank you, Prasad. That was a cool demo. Hopefully, all of you liked uh, uh, that interesting demo where we took an available framework like TensorFlow Lite, got it running on uh, available hardware like ESP32 uh, board and using components like FreeRTOS and AWS IoT to build an interesting and compelling use case of on-device ML that can be continuously updated on the fly using over-the-air updates. So AI for microcontrollers, um, we believe, is a very rapidly uh, gaining trend in the industry. It's gathering momentum across industry and academia and research uh, uh, likewise. And it's seeing real world use cases and deployments today. Frameworks like TensorFlow Lite, available hardware, and continuously improving semiconductor technology is only going to make this even more available, rapid, and make it more interesting as well from a real world use case and deployment perspective. We saw how you can build some tools like this in an easy example. We would love for you to try out these examples. While it is simple, it provides a baseline for adding more features, enhancing more capabilities, and we will continue to do that. We welcome you to try out the source code that is pointed to in that link there. And also we welcome you to join communities like the tinyml.org foundation, which is part of MLPerf, an industry-wide consortium, industry and academic consortium that is uh, dedicated towards bringing uh, uh, practitioners today in AI and ML together to build frameworks, benchmarks, optimization methodology for bringing machine learning to the masses. So we hope you enjoyed this session and uh, continue to interact with us, uh, engage with us. Please read our paper that's available in this conference uh, for this session visit our AWS virtual booth and chat with me and other IoT colleagues here on any questions you might have. And thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed. And please reach out to us for any questions, feedback, comments, and working in future with us. Thank you very much.